Hi, everyone. We decided that we wanted to do a few episodes just to experiment and see how you all are reacting to it based on recent acquisitions that we have in the store. Um, there, this, this episode is really going to be more on the fly. It's not something that we spent days researching. Um, and the reason why we want to do that is because, A, 99% of you are not in the LA area and you can't see some of the fabulousness uh, that's in here. And B, there are many stories to be told. Um, oftentimes when I go on buying trips or when people come in to the store to sell me things, what I look for is if a piece transcends time and if it doesn't, what's its wow factor? And I think we're going to start with maybe the mannequins because they stand out the most. Uh, this lovely dress is Azadine Alaya. It's a wool knit with um, a piece that can either be a quasi hood or it can be a very sexy decolletage with a blouson. Uh, it is something that has been acquired by certain museums, so it's you know, Alaya is definitely one of those 20th century designers that people look for. A lot of the reason is because of the sexy bodycon. I mean, he revered the female form. So, and it's very obvious when you look at how things are constructed by him. Uh, when I buy, I look for condition. And with knits, oftentimes knits can be stretched out because they're hanging. And you don't want to store knits hanging because the sh shoulders will droop from the weight of the garment. Um, it's best to hang it over like a, a pant hanger. So there is uh, even distribution and uh, there is no um, what I call nipples, hanger nipples. <laughs> uh, we try and avoid that. You can always get that fixed by taking it to a dry cleaner that knows how to block wool. So this piece is in excellent condition, so I was thrilled to find it. And then on this dress form, we're not quite sure who the designer is. Uh, it's a good designer. Um, it is from Eamon Wardy, which was a very high-end specialty store, boutique. And um, you can tell that it was a better, uh, I don't know why the label is missing, but um, the fabric, the choice of fabric, uh, the embellishments, and also oftentimes you'll find pieces that say front. There's an actual tag that says front uh, so that it's put on the body in a proper way. Um, I know certain designers do that, but I don't want to say which designer I think this is because we don't know. And then, as we move along, we'll do the accessories. This totally floats my boat. It's a beautiful red purse. The condition is not excellent. The edges are a bit on the um, worn side. But let's see if I can do this gracefully. There's a lever on this side. And when you do that, it opens up to what looks like a book. And both sides have a pretty good amount of room to put things in. What I love about this is the shape, the surprise element, and it does have a maker's mark on the inside. The hardware is spectacular. And when I buy pieces that are not in perfect condition, I buy them with the concept of inspiring other designers. I know a designer will buy this to reinterpret in today's world. Uh, one of the other accessories that I got, gorgeous gloves with uh, suede applique on what I think is kid, gold kid. Uh, it's never been worn, so it's in excellent condition, uh, and it really makes a strong statement. It's a f really great piece to wear uh, with evening attire or during the day. Depends on who you are. And then this piece, I love the shape. It's an A-frame, uh, and it has plenty of room, so your cell phone will fit in. It, it's got a great label. It's called the Gay Bag. It's a gay bag. But what is great about this is this is a wonderful inspirational piece for people who want to upcycle or repurpose. Um, this is like fake fur 
with cotton trim border and then what looks like broken bits of jewelry, uh, mostly plastic. So you can find a lot of these bits and pieces at flea markets and create your own personal uh, purse. Uh, won't have the fabulous label on the inside, but anyway, so these are two, three items that I wanted to share with you. And then hanging, I'm going to start from this side this romantic silk chiffon with lace ruffle, great decolletage, never worn, so no perspiration stains, is Chanel. And it has an iMagnon label, so it's from the 1980s. And double row of lace. You have to see this on to really get the full impact of how beautiful and sexy this is. That's the other reason why we wanted to do these. It's different when I'm holding a garment and moving it than for you to see this on the website. Flat 2D versus moving 2D. Uh, all of these pieces will be on our website, so if you're curious and want to buy them, please check it out. Now, we did an episode on the 80s does 40s, and I don't think we can get a better example this is a Donna Karen black label. The work on this is soutache, some people call it bonaz, with gold stud work. And it is definitely Hollywood glamour from the 40s. Excellent condition, great detail. Oh, and I should mention that it's a lightweight wool crepe, so it's a weight that works well in all climates. This herringbone, heavy uh, two-button blazer, is Hermes, and it's during Martin Margiela's reign. You can tell by the label. It is um, it's a good size, classic style, and I mean, who's going to pass up an Hermes when you're shopping, right? Uh, the lining is the horse-drawn carriage, beautiful finishing, which you would expect, you know, silk piping around the edges, and I um, love this. Now, for those of you that are still appreciating and loving the identity of disco, and Studio 54, the satin positive negative jumpsuit is fun and fabulous. It's in great condition. And you know, for me, it's about the silhouette, it's about the style, and it's about the condition. So all of these items fall into too fabulous to pass up. Now we want to get something for everyone in the store. And when I lived in San Francisco, Jessica McClintock was the bee's knees. Her label, Gunny Sacks, is loved to this very day and is sought out by um, many people who have the personality of wanting to wear romantic, the prints, the actual silhouette, and it's got this great lace-up bodice. And once again, excellent condition and just adorable. I mean, I probably wore this when I was in my early 20s. One of the things that floats my boat always is ethnic attire. And part of it is because of the work that's put in, the spirit that people put into. This kaftan is probably from Turkey because of the embroidery. It's on a moray. Uh, file. You can see like a watermark pattern which is from the weave. It's not a print. And all of this work, all of this embroidery is hand done. It's a uh, tambour stitch which is a chain stitch. It's metallic for the most part. And uh, channel your inner sultan wearing this piece. And I love this. I may end up snagging this for myself if, if it doesn't sell quickly. So um, 
sexy is the buzzword here in LA. People have so many red carpet events to go to. And this beautiful gown is by Jean-Louis Scherer, who was pretty big in the 70s and 80s. He's not a name that a lot of people are familiar with. What I love about this is it's architectural. You can see the cut uh, goes into the rib cage, and then there's this sheer panel that goes around the back. But it's heavily embellished by gold beads, uh, not real gold, and uh, these rhinestone rondelles. Um, so, and, and it has a train. So the condition on this is beautiful, and I can't wait to see this on actually a, a human body to see how it falls. A lot of people have written in their comments, if we can talk about storage, hanging garments is, you know, obviously a way that most all of us uh, take care of our clothing, hanging or folding. If you are unsure, you want to think about the weight of the garment and how that will impact the shoulders and the body of the garment if it's hanging. So for example, if an item is beaded, you don't want to hang it. You want to store it flat. Um, I mentioned knitwear, you want to fold or store flat. Um, the other thing is, you know, the enemies are uh, the weight of the garment, light can cause uh, fading and um, shattering. It accelerates the destruction of natural fibers. And uh, I would also say dust is uh, an enemy of clothing. So if you have unbleached sheets that you're not using on your beds, those are a great way to store items flat. Bleach is a major enemy. It continuously breaks down f the fiber. So uh, avoid using bleach in your cleansing process at all costs. I mean, we can get into more detail of conservation and, and maintaining your clothes. But that's it for now. And um, we look forward to seeing you for our next full episode. So that's it for now. Thanks so much. Bye. Thank you.